classic one. It's not a new publication. It's very kind of, it's been out for quite some time, but I wanted to make sure that I cover it just as part of like kind of my recommended reading uh, collection. And this was again by Stephen Flowers as well as his partner, Crystal Dawn. And it's about carnal alchemy, right? One of my kind of loved and delicious subjects. So nice, nice little provocative kind of picture there. This is also art from, um, as you can see, Inner Traditions uh, in terms of the kind of piece of release. So it falls in the area of kind of classic sexual magic for those of you that are not familiar. So just going to read the back. Sex magic allows us to tap into the most abundant power source available. Sexual energy, magicians, shamans, and fakirs throughout history have used physical stimulation and ritual to harness sexual energy, unlocking inner states of consciousness and activate the ability to influence their surroundings with pleasure. Well, while pleasure is often the focus of the stimulation, pain is just as effective, um, if not more so. So I'm just going to read to that part but that's kind of like why i wanted to put this book out there because where most of the um, kind of books on sexual magic is really just from the kind of typical joy based pleasure based they're more like sex extensions of the you know typical sexuality area than they are in the area of magic where this kind of explores the more kind of aspect of carnal bdsm uh, and what 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 Stephen here refers to as carnal alchemy, sado magical techniques for pleasure and pain for a self transformation, and this is a it's, it's one of those kind of like classic little re reads, and we're just gonna have a look at quickly at the at the overall content, so you got a bit of an idea, and I'm also gonna from now on try and get through these book reviews a lot or a lot faster, where my usual half an hour I think is a bit extreme, so I'm gonna try and just focus on the content, on, on the main reasons of why you might want to buy the book or just look into getting it. So again, so we got the, the, the full classic, and this is the third edition um, this is, uh, of this book, uh, especially at the time of this, right for this one. Um, it starts off with important safety notes, and this is, again is a serious kind of thing, especially if you've ever played BDSM or anything like that, there are serious risks and one needs to be consid considerate of that. He then explores the idea of sexual magic and carnal alchemy, the relationship between two, and then explores a bit of the history History and really actually dives into what's known as the Order Triskelion um, and its historical aspects of a, as a, as a sex magic uh, practice and group. The general theory of carnal alchemy and sadomasochism, uh, sadomasochism or sadomasochic, uh, the submissive S&M, sadomagic in his context, not just sadomasochism, but kind of overlapping in titles, the dominant S uh, S SM, how it works, working techniques, the concept of a chamber, or for all you Fifty Shades of Grey people out there, your <laughs> room of play, of pain, your red room, or however you want to look at that. And then the appendix, which is the exploration, a little bit more of the order Triskelion, and then just the kind of resources. So again, the basic disclaimer, good um, concept of the preface of the, of the third edition we spoke about. Um, again, this is just a really kind of good book to kind of get your hands on if you have, especially if you're ex interested in exploring the ideas of sexual magic, but from a BDSM point of view. The, so he, he, again, is a very recognized and respected author. And I think you're also exploring the psyche of what's happening, why the interest in kink, why the value of pain um, and the exploration of it in the utilization for altered states, but also providing a very deep kind of sexual basis or historical basis, looking from the OTO and the Fraterna Saturna, uh, a number of other kind of historical components like that as we kind of dive into that rich history of Western sex magic as a whole. Again, um, Dr. Stephen Flowers, no explore, no difference from this. Exploring this, people in the BDSM will be very familiar with the Marquis de Sade and its influence upon the idea of that, as well as Julius Evola and the discussions of this metaphysic of metaphysics of sex. Um, very influential thinkers, um, Leopard Ritter von Sachsen Machos, where we get that essentially with we get the word masochist really fun. Seder massacre, Seder masher. Uh, forgive my. You know, pronunciation there uh, to Alistair Crowley. So tonight, William Seabrook, uh, Ernst Scheider, Gerald Gardner, even that, how it explores, even looking in the origins a little bit, this is quite interesting. The exploring of the rich, uh, the story of O, and how the author of the story of O uh, actually had connection ties back to Maria 
then I'll call Vaska. And for any of you that are um, students of sex magic, will be very familiar with Maria's work and her influence, a woman who had a bit of a relationship with Rasputin himself, um, which may have influenced some of her kind of magic in that sense as well. Anton LaVey, uh, again, uh, Stephen No, stranger to the Left Hand Paths Mysteries, um, all the way through to the deeper kind of explorations of this. But great, again, a very solid kind of handbook and exploration, both also the psychologies that's required from the submissive in terms of that kind of practice as well as the archetypal mind as well as the dominant and what those roles kind of play what do they mean and how it is played out in pretty much a ritual context how the process works the operative tools uh, essentially you know how we can kind of magically empower our bdsm practice how to plan the session working the chamber um, all the details in and around that serious a series of working techniques and methodologies he explores everything from bondage to flagellations to piercing penetration clamping and how those tools are specifically utilized in a magical point of view this is one of the kind of things that i really enjoyed about this book because it's not just um how uh you know it's not a bdsm with a bit of magic it's magic um, and, and spiritual self-transmutation. And he really looks at that deeper kind of aspect of it. And then it's kind of peppered with some of those aspects. And then exploring a little bit more, again, this history of the auditor skating, one of the most influential um, kind of, shall we say, groups or practicing bodies or groups around that sex magic and occult history, which is very interesting. So also like how to connect with the order um, and, its, and its current kind of incarnation as it had, as headed up by Stephen um, and you have the information to kind of connect through to that. So along with some good general kind of information. So a classic book to read. Um, definitely one that you want to make sure that you get inside of your uh, collection. If you're a serious sex magician exploring, especially if you're a left-hand path practitioner and you're looking for a nice accompaniment book. Like if you can get this and a copy of um, Demons of the Flesh uh, by... Uh, uh, a different author, forgive my, forgive me as my name kind of forgot now one of the most important people and one of the most influential people in our, our, our history, but a classic piece to also get to just kind of add and complete that cycle. So do pick up a copy and I hope you enjoyed this and this was useful for you to make a, a purchasing decision. I've always felt a little different, a little uneasy between regular folk, a bit of a dreamer, a lost cause, a little non-ordinary some would say. I think I've always just been this way. My mother said I was special. My father thought I should be feared. But I knew that witchcraft coursed through my veins the first time I tasted the lips of the goddess inside the rain. Yes, I'm a witch, it's true. And sure, we are the ones who believe in the beauty of nature, who believe in the things science absent of art cannot explain, who instead of religion would have romance, and sure, you may think we have lost our way, when in the world of predictable things we have such unfamiliar things that we would like to say. But maybe in a world so cold and alone, a little unfamiliar is exactly what is needed to show us the way home.